The Battle of Halb lasted from April 24, May 1, 1945 was a battle in which the German 9th Army, under the command of General Oberst Theodor Busser, was destroyed as a fighting force by the Red Army during the Battle for Berlin. The 9th Army, trapped in a large pocket in the Spree Forest region southeast of Berlin, attempted to break out of the pocket westwards through the village of Halb and the Pine Forest south of Berlin to link up with the German 12th Army commanded by General Walther Wenk with the intention of heading west and surrendering to the Western Allies. To do this the 9th Army had to fight their way through three lines of Soviet troops of the 1st Ukrainian Front under the command of Marshal Ivan Konev, while at the same time units of the 1st Belo-Russian Front, under the command of Marshal Georgi Dukov, attacked the German rearguard from the northeast. After very heavy fighting about 30,000 German soldiers, one-fifth of those trapped in the pocket, managed to reach the comparative safety of the 12th Army's front lines. The rest were either killed or captured by the Soviets. Prelude On April 16, the Soviets started the Battle of Berlin with a three-Soviet front attack across the Oder-Neichia line. By April 21, they had broken through the German front line in two places and had started to surround Berlin. The German 9th Army covered the defences of the Silo Heights against Marshal Dukov's 1st Belo-Russian Front, but its position was unhinged by the successful attack of Marshal Ivan Konev's 1st Ukrainian Front on the Nyshir. By April 20, it had to withdraw southeast of Berlin, opening the way for the 1st Belorussian Front. Because of the high speed of the advance of Konev's forces, the 9th Army was now threatened with envelopment by the two massive Soviet pincers that were heading for Berlin from the south and east. The southern pincer consisted of the 3rd and 4th Guards tank armies which had penetrated the furthest and had already cut through the area behind the 9th Army's front lines. Encirclement German dispositions The command of the 5th SS Mountain Corps, trapped with the 9th Army north of Forst, passed from the 4th Panzer Army to the 9th Army. The Corps was still holding on to Cobus while the bulk of Army Group Center was being forced by the advance of the 1st Ukrainian Front to withdraw along its lines of communication to the southwest towards Czechoslovakia. The southern flank of the 4th Panzer Army had some local successes counter-attacking north against the 1st Ukrainian Front. Hitler gave orders which showed that his grasp of military reality had gone. He ordered the 9th Army to hold Kotbus and set up a front facing west, then they were to attack into the Soviet columns advancing north. This would allow them to form the northern pincer which would meet with the 4th Panzer Army coming from the south and envelop the 1st Ukrainian front, before destroying it. They were to anticipate an attack south by the 3rd Panzer Army and to be ready to be the southern arm of a pincer attack which would envelop the 1st. Belarusian Front, which would then be destroyed by SS Lieutenant General Felix Steiner's 3rd SS Panzer Corps advancing from the north of Berlin. Later in the day, Steiner made it plain that he did not have the divisions to make this effort. Heinrich I then explained to Hitler's staff that unless the 9th Army retreated immediately, it would be enveloped by the Soviets. He stressed it was already too late for the unit to move northwest to Berlin and would have to retreat west. Heinrich I went on to say that if Hitler did not allow it to move west, he would ask to be relieved of his command. At his afternoon situation conference on April 22, Hitler fell into a tearful rage when he realized that his plans of the day before were not going to be implemented. He declared that the war was lost, blamed the generals and announced that he would stay in Berlin until the end and then kill himself. In an attempt to coax Hitler out of his rage, the chief of staff of the OKW, General Alfred Jodl, speculated that the 12th Army, which was facing the Americans, could move to Berlin because the Americans already on the Elbe River were unlikely to move further east. Hitler immediately seized upon the idea and within hours, the army's commander, General Walther Wenk, 
was ordered to disengage from the Americans and move the 12th Army northeast to support Berlin. It was then realized that if the 9th Army moved west, it could link up with the 12th Army. In the evening, Heinrich I was given permission to make the link up. Although in Hitler's mind the 12th Army was going to break through to Berlin and the 9th Army, once it had broken through to the 12th Army, was going to help them. There is no evidence that Generals Heinrich I, Busser or Wenk thought that this was at all possible. However, Hitler's agreement to allow the 9th Army to break through to the 12th Army would allow a window through which sizable numbers of German troops could escape to the West and surrender to the Americans which is exactly what Wenk and Busser agreed to do. This was made easier when, shortly after midnight on April 25, Busser was given authority to decide for himself the best direction of attack. The situation of the 9th Army before being encircled, the 9th Army had already suffered heavy losses in the Battle of the Silo Heights. It is estimated that, at the start of the encirclement, it had fewer than 1,000 guns and mortars. 79 tanks and probably a total of 150 to 200 combat-ready armored fighting vehicles left. In all, there were about 80,000 men in the pocket, the majority of whom belonged to the 9th Army, consisting of the 11th SS Panzer Corps. 5th SS Mountain Corps and the newly acquired 5th Corps, but there was also the Frankfurt Garrison. The number of tanks reported included 36 tanks in the 11th SS Panzer Corps, including up to 14 King Tigers of the 102nd SS Heavy Panzer Battalion. Air supply was attempted on April 25 and 26 but could not be carried out because the planes that had taken off could not find the drop point for supply, and no contact to the encircled army could be established. The pocket into which the 9th Army had been pushed by troops of the 1st Belarusian and 1st Ukrainian fronts was a region of lakes and forest in the Spree Forest southeast of Furs and Valda. The Soviets, having broken through and surrounded their primary objective of Berlin, then turned to mopping up those forces in the pocket. On the afternoon of April 25, the Soviet 3rd, 33rd, and 69th Armies, as well as the 2nd Guards Cavalry Corps, attacked the pocket from the northeast as ordered by Marshal Georgi Dukov, the commander of the 1st Belorussian Front. Konev knew that to break out to the west, the 9th Army would have to cross the Berlin-Dresden Autobahn south of a chain of lakes starting at Tupitz and running northeast. On the same day as Dukov's attack in the northeast, he sent the 3rd Guards Army to support the 28th Army, which was ready to close the likely breakout route over the Berlin-Dresden Autobahn. Soviet dispositions Soviet forces ordered to attack the 9th Army numbered around 280,000 men, 7,400 guns and mortars. 280 tanks and self-propelled guns, and 1,500 aircraft. The force included 6 Air Corps and the 1st Guards Breakthrough Artillery Division, which was committed on April 25. In the area to the west of the encirclement, Soviet forces were already positioned in depth. With the 28th Army's 128th Rifle Corps in the area of Mittenwalde and Motzen, the 3rd Guards Rifle Corps in the area of Tornau, Raidland, Baruth, Mark, Golson, the 3rd Guards Army's 120th Rifle Corps south of Halb, the 21st Rifle Corps along the Berlin to Dresden Autobahn 13 to the west of Lubin, the 13th Army's 102nd Rifle Corps with the 117th Guards Rifle Division near Luckenwalde, the 27th Rifle Corps's 280th Rifle Division at Duterbog, where the Wehrmacht's main artillery school was located. In terms of mechanized formations, the 3rd Guards Tank Army's 9th Mechanized Corps had its 71st Mechanized Brigade between Tupitz and Neuhof, the 4th Guards Tank Army's 68th Guards. Tank Brigade stood near Kummersdorf Gut and the 3rd Guards Army's 25th Tank Corps near Duben. Both the 3rd Guards Army and the 13th Army were to be heavily reinforced throughout the battle, as they were to be in the path of the German breakout.
A reinforcement of particular note was the deployment of the 1st Guards Breakthrough Artillery Division under the command of the 3rd Guards Army in the sector of Turo to Brezen.